Returning now to our top story in the high level US China talks in Anchorage, Alaska, for some analysis, I want to bring in Surab Gupta. He's a resident senior fellow at the Institute for China America Studies. Good to speak with you again, Surab. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Jero. Always. So I just want to start uh, with some of your key take uh, takeaways from the talks we heard over the past few days. Uh, for me, the key takeaway was that uh, the U.S. side particularly was trying to cover its political flanks. It came in with a hard line, but at the end of the day, they really also did want a productive meeting. And at the end of the day, I think it's, it worked politically, perhaps for one side or for both sides. But for, from, a, from a substantive point of view, I think it absolutely worked well for both sides. And that's a good take, good enough. I think both sides will be happy for, with that. All right. Well, so, Sir so Blinken said, Secretary Blinken said that the China-U.S. relationship must be competitive where it should be, collaborative where it can be, adversarial where it must be. We've seen a lot of competition lately, not much of it healthy. How can things improve? Well, I think things can improve just through constructive dialogue. Uh, you know, the previous administration wanted to tear U.S.-China relations down, and that's why the relationship got into is, is, in, the, is in the sort of phase it is in right now. Uh, but I, I believe the Biden administration does want to have constructiveness and utility in this relationship restored. And yes, of course, they do. the, the two countries do have interests which absolutely... Uh, don't coincide, in fact, confront with each other, and they have to hash it out, and they have to talk it out to each other. But the areas of cooperation are significant, and they're significant not just for the two countries, but for the region and the world as a whole. And I think on the public health front and on the climate change front, these are perfect uh, confidence-building measures for the two sides to start off with, and very timely, if I may say so. Very timely, um, you know, you did mention you know, climate change, uh, the pandemic, and of course, uh, we had Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan. So how do they start collaborating on some of these issues then? Oh, at the end of the day, not at the end of the day, but I mean, they need to put something substantive on the table. And it's easy to put something substantive on the table in terms of in the area of public health, in terms of vaccine dissemination and building capacity in poor countries together or under the aegis of COVAX or the WHO or the G20. Uh, it's again on the climate change front, there are important nationally determined contributions to be made, peaking year dates, et cetera, et cetera. They can be active in this front. China is gonna be putting out its five-year plan with regard to energy. So it's not that difficult to do substantive things this year and move beyond talk. And of course, one hopes that on things like Afghanistan and on Iran, the other parties also can put, bring something to the table. I'm optimistic, frankly, and that, that, that things will get better and it'll get better because of substance and not just because it's just mere talk and hope people are hoping that think that will lead to something. There will be real substance. And so, of course, you know, many countries, you touched on this very briefly, you know, lots of countries, the different regions are closely watching this, right? Because relations between the world's two largest economies has huge ramifications for all these other places. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you can even see from the itinerary of the top cabinet secretaries in Japan, in Korea, General Austin's in New Delhi today, uh, of course, there's going to be a NATO meeting. The Europeans are looking very carefully also at this because they have a very important agreement on investment with China and which also has ramifications on the sidelines with regard to Xinjiang and, the, and those issues, uh, the issue of forced labor, which must be dealt with in the for, within the international labor organizations, core conventions. Uh, so a lot of people are looking for this. And, and people want big countries to be able to work together and to work constructively. People understand it's not easy to do so, but they also realize if they cannot put their heads together and be constructive, then we have no chance. And frankly, there's a lot of areas in which we can be constructive, and I hope that that is the approach and the attitude of both administrations, uh, of both governments, and I actually think the Biden administration too feels that way. Sarab Gupta, always good to speak with you. Thank you for your time.